Hi. I'm Item. It's been a little while since my last stream, but today we're doing Outer Wilds, the Echoes of the Eye DLC. And as it says in the stream title, I have played Outer Wilds before. I've played it a couple of times. All right. It's looking the way I want it to. Uh, can I? <laughs> I hate to keep doing this. No, it's just. Maybe I will remove the back backdrop. Okay, so we're just gonna have black borders on the side because I don't like having that bright blue backdrop there. All right. Might be better if I'm on this side. Now, looks like it's giving us the option to resume expedition, which is probably going to pick up my previous save file. I'm gonna start brand new. I know how to beat the game. I know different shortcuts you can use to get to the end of the game quicker. And I do plan to beat the game again after doing whatever the DLC is. It seems like it must be a new location, somehow linked to museum exhibit. And when I started up to this stuff to test before I started streaming, it also gave me a warning. It might be too intense. We can turn down the scares for you. <laughs> and actually, let me see if that, I wanna make sure that option, whoa. Wait, okay, so these are different. Advanced, reflight checklist. Okay, the menu has been changed a little bit. Jetpack auto boost. Jetpack boost can be triggered with a separate button press or at any time upward. No, yeah, I don't want the auto boost on. Freeze time while talking to others? No. I, freezing time while reading text is very important, so you can actually read the text properly without skipping through anything. But I feel like freezing if you freeze time while talking to others, then you lose out on the animations and the cool random stuff like talking to Gab Gabro and suddenly mid-conversation your island gets shot up into the sky. Which is kind of cool. Invert player look. We're using a Steam controller. Which you can't actually buy anymore. They're not around anymore. Which is kind of cool. I mean, it's not cool for people that don't have one, but I've got two. So that kind of makes me feel special. It doesn't, it does have the odd issue with it, but just for normal game playing, it's totally fine. Reduced frights, echo, okay. So we're gonna leave that disabled. We're not going to reduce the frights. We're gonna have full fright sensitivity and default flight sensitivity. And everything else is the way I want it to be. Text speed, we'll leave text speed normal. I don't feel like I need to speed through any text. I don't know if I had modified any of the inputs. I probably have to, do I need to invert look? I think I do. I forget what, I, nor, what I'm used to doing with the Steam controller. Uh, invert ship look, yes. That is a must. Like, I don't feel like you should be able to get through piloting controls without inverting your Y. Of course, that might be the reverse of what I'm expecting, so... We'll, we'll put it on. I can change it later. And we're gonna start a new expedition. We're gonna skip most of the village. Unless... Are you sure this will... Oh, I don't want to delete... Pro we want to switch profile. Okay. Echoes. Certain parts of Echo of the Eye can be intense for some players. If they become an obstacle to your enjoyment of Outer Wilds, a Reduced Frights option is available in the gameplay menu. Thank you for supporting Outer Wilds Ventures. A new museum exhibit is now available in the Village Observatory. So that's Those are the same two messages I got when I booted this up after installing the DLC. Current profile Echoes. Alright, cool. New expedition. I 
I actually wonder if that has an effect if you play through this on a previously beat save file. Might, it might be kind of a meta thing, but it's the sort of thing that this game might do. Alright, wake up. Ooh, a little bit of frame rate lag. Okay, we're good. Ooh. Is it the fire? No, the fire's fine. I've got gyro controls on my Steam controller. Mm, the frame rate's not great, so what I'm gonna do is turn down 1680 by 1050. alias quality. We'll turn that down to medium. Turn down shadows. Desync. Obviously we'll leave that. I mean, not that it matters if we're in window mode. 16.10. Alright, that is... Well, it's still not perfect, but... Should be done loading in. That feels a lot smoother now, actually. There's our pilot. Back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. Gotta talk to Slate a little bit. Come on. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this BDO off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. All systems go. Everyone chooses the third option for that, the Retro Rockets, but I'm good to go. Glad you're excited, but remember, if you wreck the ship, I'm not building you a new one. I'm not made of lightweight, reentry grade aluminum alloys, you know. Anyway, you'll get the, the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Alright, so... I have... Yeah, I do have an... Okay, good. Come on. Yeah, my Steam controller is acting up a little bit. It's not doing the gyro when I expected it to. Is not work. Okay, there we go. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Heck, the jankiness might kind of make things a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. No, you know what? Now it's it's becoming enough of a problem. Maybe I will switch to mouse input if the game lets me. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we're doing this mouse style. Mouse and keyboard style. There's those two kids. The funny thing being, I've never actually... I don't normally play this with the mouse, I usually use this game controller, so that's kind of a bummer that it's not working. Is that... No, it seems fine now. Okay. You know what? Let's just roll with that. It's not the mouse going out of frame rate. Right? Uh, let's see. I, I feel like this is the sort of issue that would be solved by going full screen, but if I do that, I don't think I'll be able to stream it properly. Oh, okay. No, it seems to be working. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know what? It is working now. That's weird. It wasn't working. It wasn't working in full screen before. 
<laughs> full screen. Get ready for some full screams in this. There might be a couple. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. There must be something going on here that I should be able to fix. Configuration support disabled. That's okay. Well, that's a weird message. Let's try that again. Generic gamepad configuration support must be enabled in the Steam's main controller. Well, I'm not using this. All right. Sorry, folks. We're going to do this a little... A little bit of troubleshooting on this. Detected controllers. Uh, is that even there? Support. I have something else being detected as a generic gamepad. I wonder... We'll just have to just start unplugging things that might be considered a generic gamepad. Oh, it's my keyboard. Okay. That's ironic. Alright, so exit big picture. We're going to try to do this with other keyboard. Hopefully that doesn't cause us an issue. I wonder why my game, my keyboard would be considered that. There's probably some way to blacklist it or something, but there's probably some media keys on it that Steam is incorrectly identifying as a gamepad. That might be what's causing some sort of problem with my controller. The actual controller. Okay. Da, da, da. We got the already. New expedition. And this is not viewable, is it? Try this again. So if I turn full screen mode off and turn it back on. Yeah, that's so weird that it works that way. Okay, well, let's just roll with it. Mm, no, I'm still having issues with the controller. All right, so the keyboard. Doing whatever it was doing is not the cause of the issue. Alright, I'm giving up on the controller for now. I'm ready to just get into this. Uh, I don't really... I didn't, wasn't going to do this, but maybe I'll just do this just to check out my controls. Hey, I want to practice with a pro before I leave. Aw, oh, you're just saying that. But if you really want to practice with me, I guess I could help you out a little. Try to land on one of those geyser pools. Show me what you've got. Alright, so horizontal thrust. Oh, okay, it's control for down. Whoop. It's not space for jump for up. There we go. Ooh. Now my Steam controller is protesting. There we go. Not even using it, it's still causing problems. Alright. Oh, so, that didn't work out. I think I got a feel for it. Leave. Okay, I still look the same. But basically, I'm gonna play through most 
not maybe not the whole game, but most of the game, I'll play through again. I want to get to the end, and I want to see if playing through Echoes the Eye changes the type of ending you get. And I'm just choosing to do this because I feel like that's how I would want to do it if I weren't streaming it. Right now, this stream is its more for me than it is for anybody else. I don't even care if anybody's watching. I haven't actually streamed in the past month that much either, so this is a good way to get back into it. I've been busy with school and stuff. Okay, so we're at the Ghost Matter. Still looks the same as before. I'm probably expecting to see differences where it wouldn't even make sense. Oh, that was an eclipse. Wait, what, it was an eclipse? What passed by? It's either something that's too close to the sun for me to really properly see, or no, it's not the moon, because the moon's just passing by now. Hmm. Well, go in. We're gonna skip the zero G cave, because I'm comfortable enough with the controls. The moon. Whoa, okay. Man. I'm ready. We're gonna do this. Ooh, let's turn up the graphics a little bit. Those textures are pretty bad. Full. To alias, medium. We'll leave shadows on. Rendering cost high. Okay. There we go. That looks better. And we'll talk to Hal. Just thank you, Lee. But to translate any know my text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? Haha. <laughs> oh jeez. Do not break it. Ugh. Ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous. And I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm terrified. Ah, uh, don't be, don't let me make you nervous. You've been training for this day since we were hatchlings, remember? You'll do great, I promise. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? Just here for the launch codes. Yeah, I get that you're dying to head out in space, but seriously, you've got to see the statue before you go. It's an amazing find. Makes me wish we could see what the real life what a real live Nomai would look like. Or makes me wish I could, we could see what a real live Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. For how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, jeez. I got a little carried away there. Go on. You have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Okay, so... I'm gonna see... Oh. <laughs> oh, he says new exhibit right there. Because I was thinking... For some reason, I was thinking that the suns... No, they were... I think they were over here, but... No, you... I'm trying to remember if they... If the suns were over here before, or if they were always the spot. No, we got a satellite. It's a Hearthian satellite. The radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite, and to this day still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the deep space satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of the solar system. Okay, so... What looks unusual in this? I'm guessing the one oddly shaped orbit is the interloper there. That's going close to the sun. Everything else looks normal. The only thing that's different is the satellite itself. <laughs> like I said, it's a vertical orbit. 
so it's going a totally different direction than anything else. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the Deep Space Satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time solar system map used by our newest astronauts. Oh, nice. Oh, so that's an explanation for how you're able to see, like, a zoomed-out mini-map. I mean, I guess that makes sense. They would have some explanation for that. It kind of works it into... It's a good... It's a good hook for how it works into the rest of the game. How do I... What button do I press for my signal scope? I'm not gonna walk all the way. Oh, it's Y. Okay. Oh, and I just can't... I can't pick up the quantum... the quantum fluctuations yet. That's okay. Might be important later, but... I'm not too worried about it now. I love those little windows. They're weird little windows. Okay, so we know about the deep space satellite. So that is probably a big part of whatever this DLC is. Okay, everything else looks normal up here. There you are. Just finished pre flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get a newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Nomai translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? I want to go somewhere nowhere, no one's gone before. I like it. You'll have plenty of options to choose from. No one's ever landed on the interloper before, you know. Perhaps you'll be the first. I must say, should you choose to go to Dark Ramble, be very careful. No one's explored there before, either. For what you'll find are excellent reasons. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for our launch. I'm ready to die in space. I ha- I ha- you have to- Yeah, that's- that's the only answer. If you're not ready to die in space, then... You should pick a different game. I love watching people play this game and get to the minimap. That when it does the slow zoom out, it always looks like it. It's it's always a nice wow moment for everybody. I do not see the satellite yet, but I have a feeling it might not even show up normally. Until, until the game has started rolling. From what I understand, the game... The, the solar system starts its time. It's, it's like clockwork mechanism. Once you get in touch with the test statue down below on your way out of here. Alright, so... We'll talk to her... Memory statue friend. I think it's cool how, at least the first time that you see this, you don't realize that the game's recording your every moment, but it totally is. There's the quantum moon, and there's the probe, the Harthian probe. Launch tower. So there is a radio tower here, too. Did you get a look at that Nomai statue? The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. The statue was doing what? So its eyes opened, then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like medically speaking? No, that stu statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornfell's tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabbro said they were going back to Shine's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. 
Maybe they'll be able to tell, maybe they'll be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabro's, you know, Gabro. So maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous of you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. No, we can't see the map yet. I have to get back to the ship first. Yeah. We'll have to walk past the Doomer kid. The Doomer child. Ooh. Uh, looks like you're ready for takeoff. The excitement of the launch is fun and all, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new ship. We're working on fixing the autopilot's, autopilot's avoidance system for this one. Uh, sorry. Definitely come in, could have definitely come in handy for this ship. Not the one you're currently working on. Alright, so I'm going to take just a quick break. And then we're going to get right into it. And, oh. Something... Yeah. Uh, let me... Okay, we're going to stop using full screen mode. There we go. Now we can see. Now we can see everything that's happening. All right. I, I'll leave it unpaused, and I will be right back. anyone asked, this is not alcoholic. It's sparkling water. Alright, so... There's the interloper. There are two new locations that we know of. One is the deep space set probe, which I don't even know if we can fly there directly. But we're gonna have to try that at least once. The other one being the radio tower. That should be here on Timber Earth. So let's go look for that. Ooh. We, yeah, if we zoom out, you know, being careful to not crash into the moon while we're doing this. Where's the radio tower? Oh, there we are. That looks new. Ooh. Let's bounce. There we go. And we'll keep our spacesuit on. What does our ship's log say? Ah, uh, find in rumor mode. 
What else is there in rumor mode that's new? Is this it? Yeah, this is it right now. Okay. Good enough for me. Alright, so here's the radio tower. Unidentified signal. Radio tower. Frequency discovered. Deep space radio. Oh, that's the Harthian probe, I think. Well, that's weird how it appeared, but... Okay, so... inside. Any information for us? Is there, a, is there a nuke NPC here? I don't see one on the outside. Oh, there's stuff over here though. And somebody but there's a campfire there too. There might be somebody there. Play recording. And we're recording. Uh -huh. It's been two days since the launch of the deep space satellite. And I'm about to view the first batch of photos. Let the record show that on this historic day, Outer Wilds Ventures has... Ah! They're printing. They're printing. Here they come. Stars above. Will you look at that? There's Brittle Hollow. And look. Look. There's... That's Hollow's Lantern. And there's Giant's Deep and the Quantum Moon. I'm speechless. Completely speechless. Every single astral body in our magnificent solar system, looking stunning from every angle in each of these three images, and in color, no less. Now this is art. I could stare at these photos forever. Doesn't Timber Hearth look tiny from... Hold on, what's that? That can't be right. That's... I mean, that's not even possible. Am I interpreting this photo correctly? What's even stranger is it doesn't show up on... in. It doesn't show up in either of the other two photos, just this one. Well, there must have been an, an equipment malfunction, I suppose. Only sensible explanation for it. I'll radio Gabbro and ask them to go examine the satellite's lens for defects. So I wonder if that means they found the eye, or we did. Okay, so... Angle 248, angle 350, and angle 40. Oh, 137. Okay, so that's Gabbro. I'm pretty sure they weren't referring to Gabbro as the thing that's showing up. Alright, so... Let's, wait, okay, so there are... What is different here? So Brittle Hollow... This might be the one that something is different on, because I don't know what this is supposed to be. Because that's Timber Hearth, that's the Twins, that's Giant's Deep, there's the Interloper. That's Timber Hearth there. No. No, that's Riddle Hollow. Okay, yeah, so that's Timber Hearth there. Yeah, nothing unusual about these two photos. 40 degrees is where this black object, this planet, appears. Okay, I'm thinking this is part of the mystery. So 40 degrees, we'll have to remember that. Is there anything else in here to do? I think that might be it. By checking on them at least a thousand times over, the images are still not ready to print over in the radio tower. Well, it's like they say, a watch satellite never transmits data. Haha, <laughs> that's a little joke for you, journal. No one says that. Someday I'll have to study the mechanics of how time manages to slow to a syrupy crawl whenever I'm anticipating something. In the meantime, I've turned to Gabro, our resident expert in leisurely waiting away the hours, who recommends the following. Gabro's three foolproof steps for dozing off. 
light a nice cozy campfire and get comfortable, gaze deeply into the serene warmth, let time begin to slip away as you allow the flames to lull you into a peaceful slumber. If Gapro knew I'd taken notes, they'd probably think I'd finally cracked, but I refuse to accept sass from an astronaut who deliberately burns their marshmallows. <laughs> No, no, you wouldn't do that, would you? In intentionally burn your marshmallows? You want them to be just nice, c cooked nice and brown. Extend, da. So the trick is, you don't want it right above the middle. You want it off this, off to the side. You can see it's starting to turn brown. It's not as white as it was before. There we go. That's probably about what you wanted at. That's how you know you did it right. Because if you do it wrong... It sounds... He makes a little groaning noise. Crunch, crunch, roar, instead of a lip smack. No. Alright, so... I feel like that might be everything we can discover here for now. Unless the game has us come back to this at some point. see supernovas. We cannot see the satellite yet, though. I wonder how we're supposed to get to the satellite. Does it only show up on the map once in a while, when it's getting close enough? Hard to tell. In the meantime, what I might do... First we'll zoom in the hourglass twins, just to get an idea of how much time we have. I'm thinking we're about the halfway point. I haven't been I haven't been paying attention to the time. And honestly, this game is much better if you don't pay attention to the time. So, let us head over to that's not Giant Steep. Giant Steep is behind it? No, it is too. Look. Didn't see that right away. And we'll get we'll just get the coordinates for the vessel now. So why not? Whoa, okay, game. Here we go. Oh, Nova. What you doing? Ooh. Okay, now we're looking for our twister. Whoa. That one just started. Wait. Okay, so that's going clockwise. There's one that's counterclockwise, so we'll go to that one. Ship log updated. Excellent. And that jellyfish is just coming up. Do I have one that's starting to go down? Okay, that one's coming up as well, but it's a little bit further along. for the vessel, then that's one thing out of the way. I'm not expecting like, every all the things that you need to do to get to the 
the coordinates. I'm not expecting any of that to change. But, I mean, if there's anything to indicate that they might have changed, then I'll go back and take a look. Okay. Flashlight on. Ouch. Yeah, I remember playing through this the first time. It was much harder to move around down here. And that was because closer, closer to the center, you're supposed to be in more compressed water. The idea being the water is basically just thicker and harder to move around in. But they changed that because that's not very fun. I don't really need to look at all of these, just the last one. Retrieving stored coordinates from the Ash Twin. Displaying coordinates for the Eye of the Universe. Yep, same coordinates as, as usual. That's almost kind of a missed opportunity. They could have had the coordinates randomized for every save profile. So that you'd have to come down here to figure, what, figure out what they were to be able to enter them in. Receiving data from probe 9,318 and 54. Visualizing current trajectory. I said that I don't need to read all of this, but now here I am reading it. Because I want to see it say, yeah, we found the right one. Because this is still the first loop, right? So, if I'm... If I'm logicking it out correctly, that means the probe from before this loop is the one that found the Eye of the Universe. Either that, or it's... Well, let's find out. Retrieving previous launch data from Eichtman. Total number of probes launched, 9... said 9,000 before. 9,318,54. Okay, so it is this loops probe that found it. Now see, that's what I wasn't sure about. If, because I knew that it would have to be, like, that means like nine, nine million loops happened before you woke up. Or, not before you woke up, before you started playing this game. And there are 9 million loops where your character just wakes up and does all of the things he would do, he or they would do rather, before realizing that the universe was about to end. And then immediately forget all of that, and the loop would restart, and they would continue doing the same thing. Just like all of the other NPCs in this game, other than, other than Gabro. Which I think is pretty cool. Because you don't remember any of those 9 million previous loops, because you'd forget at the end of each one. After connecting to the statue, that's the first time you start to remember loops, and that's what gives you the sense of a time loop happening. Should we try to get out of here? I mean, we should try to get out of here. We could talk to... It might help to talk to Dabro. He might have something useful to say. Man, yeah, I'm kind of missing control, the controller for this. There we go. Ship's just at the surface there. Ooh. Oh, there's a jellyfish. I don't actually know if I need to get up in the jellyfish to get out of here again, but let's try it. I think we just got there just in time. Alright. Oof! What? Oh, okay. 
Okay, the jellyfish itself stung me. Uh, it didn't hurt me too bad. I've got a little bit of a red shield. <clears throat> That's what I like to call it whenever you, your health indicator is getting starting to get that red outline. It's the red shield, it means it protected you from damage. Uh, go easy on my fuel usage. I don't know if this uses double the fuel if you're going up and forward at the same time, but... Actually, you're not using fuel when you're underwater, are you? Either that, or it's using it much more slowly than usual. get into space. It's been a little while since I played this game myself, so it would be nice to be out in space and see things go down. There we go. There's the sun. into is there? No, no. I'm below the plane of the solar system right now, so. Is there anything new that, oh, so yeah, there's the satellite. There's the deep space satellite, so it only shows up some of the time. I probably don't have enough time to get to it now. Okay, so it is, it is viewable from the map. That's what I was wondering before. I couldn't see it at the time. I get a little closer to the sun. I don't want to move away from it too much. <laughs> Never noticed that before. I you're, you lose your lock on when the sun explodes, if you're locked onto the sun. I mean, it makes sense. That's probably how it should be. All right. Okay, with that, I'm gonna take a short break because I've got some food waiting for me. Um, and I'm just gonna leave this idling so you'll hear the nice music as I'm gone. And when I come back, we'll start a new loop and go from there. And hopefully the, hopefully this DLC doesn't introduce the idea that, you know, you kind of lose karma for every one of your dudes that you kill. All right, so I will be right back.